Welcome to Cottage Necessities. Today we're going to be doing some echo printing in the microwave with the microfloor, and we're going to look into a subject called periodolia. If you haven't heard of that one, we're going to be looking for fairies' faces in our artwork after we've echo printed it. So stay tuned, stick around to the end. I've got some fascinating photos for you. Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to do some echo printing with the micro floor in the microwave. So if you wanted to do something in a kind of a hurry that you might want to try this method. It's just a simple two plastic discs, but you could also get a couple of tiles and put those together. You'd have to find some kind of way to tie it off, but um, the micro floor is just these two pieces here, and then you have a piece of thick felt, and a piece of cotton fabric, and then you also have another, the same thing on the other side. And you put the items in between, and clip them, and then put them in the microwave. Angle. Um, if you're not familiar with the micro floor, it's a way to microwave pressed flowers in, in your microwave but I was going to try doing echo printing with um, all the solutions and everything that that we would use now I'm going to post a link for this down below and I got the bigger one which is about a it's about a 9 by 9 or 10 by 10 size and what I do first is I'm going to use some of this 90 pound watercolor paper because it seems to fit in there very well and I just use I do two of them at a time fold them in half and then I stack them on top of each other that's about as many as I can get in there with um, the clamps and, you know, I don't want to break these or anything because they're just plastic, but they seem to be very sturdy. Now, I have rusted up some water with some nails. You can see the rust in there. That's your iron. I also tried soaking some plants in Geritol, which is a, <laughs> a vitamin pill that has a lot of iron in it. I've also got some onion skins here, which I've, I think they do some really nice um, dramatic colorations and that would be like here's an example of one that I use some onion skins on you can see where the onion skins were they bring in some contrast these were red geraniums so you never know what colors are going to come through because I've also used um, pink hydrangeas here and they came in yellow. Let me see some other ones. Here's another one with some onion skin treatment to it. It just gives it a little bit more fun. Look at that face. Can you see the face there? These are fairy faces, I swear. <laughs> I'm, I'm a firm believer that these are fairy faces coming through these, these uh, with these plants. Um, especially something like this one. I used onion skins, and this one I had it on for two minute increments so they come out a lot stronger. Now maybe you can see a face in there, or maybe you can even see this beautiful fairy wearing a ball gown. And I think I showed her face up close in another part of the video, but look at that fairy face. And there's even a bird right there. If you can, I don't know if you can see that bird right there, but these are very interesting to look at closely. They're so mysterious when you get them out. I know it may sound kind of woo-woo, but you know what? When you work with plants, you're working with directly with life force energy. So you don't know what you're going to get. Look at that one. That's an interesting, I don't know if you can see the face in that, but there's like a kitty cat peeking through. I see a kitty po poking his head from behind the plant. 
And look at this one. You know what you see here? I see a beautiful fairy with a ball gown. But you may see something else. But you can kind of see the outlines of some of these plants that they're just beautiful. And you see that the onion skins really add some great touches of color, really deeper colors in there. But look at that fairy. Woohoo! What a headdress that one has on. So um, it's holding its arms up like it's saying, celebrate life. <laughs> so what I'm going to do then, what I first do is I soak these in the alum water. I've got the alum water here. And I just put a big tablespoon of alum in water. And it kind of dissolves on its own. I don't think you have to do anything else to it because it pretty well dissolves. And I just, I already showed a video where I'm spraying these. I soak both sides. And get them really wet. And then I'm just going to put the living plants in them. And then after I do that, I'm going to soak it with a little bit of this cleaning. I just use cleaning vinegar that I use for my household chores. And uh, some of these flowers that I'm going to use, it was just my birthday, and my friend gave me this beautiful, I can't remember what these are called. Well, that'll come to me. chrysanthemums I don't know anyway they're just beautiful and they bring a nice color of uh, some kind of pink to the so we'll put some of those in and then we're also going to put some of the leaves in because they're very green so they probably have a lot of tannin but um, what I'm going to do is probably soak some in my iron water and I'll bring some over that I've already been soaking. These are some of the ones that don't, they, even though they are such a beautiful color, they don't bring out a lot of um, color on your echo printing. But we could try just soaking those. Now this is my Geritol soaked leaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and start placing those. And I'm gonna just place it in there. Kind of random. This is kind of an experiment. This is a rosebud that got soaked. Put it over there. One of these these little berries, I don't know what they are, but they are they were in my bouquet that I purchased at Trader Joe's. I like to go there and get the flowers because they're so, they're just pretty. And I'm going to place these around. And I found, I saw somebody else layering their flowers and I just thought that would be a fun thing to do. And it seems to really uh, make some interesting designs when you layer your flowers. So I'm just going to, these are eucalyptus that have been soaking in the iron water. And I'll just place a few more leaves randomly for this one. I would like more color. So what I'll do is um, put some pink petals and then I'll just add a couple pieces of red onion skins because they really seem to come out very nice when I do that enjoy the contrast that they give so now that that's been placed I want you to see how that looks So now I'm going to just spray that with vinegar. Close it up. And I'll do the next one. This one's already soaked in the alum, so I'm just going to lay some leaves on it that I've already soaked. And this is a hydrangea. I don't know why, but I think that soaking these seems to just do something as far as bring out 
some of the personality of the plant. So let's just do a little experiment with that. I'm going to dip this in there. See if we can bring some of that pink through. And then I've got this little bush here. I'll just dip it in, place it, and then we'll try these two. So I think these are very pretty. Now I'm just going to cut off that end, stick it on there. And I'm not going to put any onion skins on this one because I want you to see what it looks like when you don't have those. I'm going to turn this one this way. No rhyme or reason really, just trying something new here. Now these are already pretty well soaked. And so I lay those in there on top of that cloth and then there's this felt and they fit pretty well right there. And then this just goes right on top like that your felt on there and then you put your top plate Oop. now sometimes these can get kind of thick that's why I only do two but um, if, if, if you can't clip it all the way I just kind of do it halfway most of them will clip on the whole both hard surfaces just want to be careful not to break anything. So just uh, be mindful of that. We're going to go put this in the microwave for two minutes. Okay, I just took this out of the microwave and now I had it in there for two minutes. I just want to check it. And you may want to use a well vent, I mean, open your windows when you're doing this. This gets pretty wet and steamy. Okay, so I just like to check it at this point. I see some pattern and color coming up. It's looking really beautiful. But I think it can go for another couple of minutes. So I think I'm going to just spray a little more vinegar in there. Same with this one. See some nice color coming out. And they get kind of dry on top, so I like to turn them over. Make sure they're really wet. That one looks well. Before you put it back in, you want to make sure it's really super wet. And we'll put that back in for another two minutes. Huh? Okay, so we've got those going for two minutes. Now I did try doing one minute increments and I kept going and going and going and going. I ended up doing like up to five or six times to get some of these prints that I'm showing you. And they came out fairly, fairly light like that still. And, and I got a hole in that one, but um, I the two minute increment seems to do a lot more color and intensity in your prints. So that one was in for two two minute increments and I thought it came out really pretty. So we'll see. Okay, this just came out of the microwave. It was in there for two full minutes. It's pretty hot. So let's see how it turned out. Gently lift. Now, once you're finished with this project, you want to make sure you air these out really well. Just leave them loose out so they can, and they dry pretty fast. They'll dry pretty fast. Same with the little sheet of cotton. So this paper is really dry. I'm going to take a look and see what we got here. Mostly yellows. Can see what I'm doing here. Let's see what this big leaf did. Onion skins. 
See the onion skin left a nice dark yellow color in there. And these are red onion skins that I'm using. So they're kind of kind of interesting. You could leave, you could put this in for another two minutes. In fact, uh, we have one more that I haven't unopened yet. So there's a that's a pink rosebud right there. You can see a just a hush of pink around it. And the onion skins seem to cook the fastest, and sometimes they can burn if you're not um, careful and leave it in too long. But this, these big leaves are really, these are hydrangea leaves. Pretty, pretty nice. Oh, look. It's very interesting. Looks like these look like two little fairies. I don't know if you can see these. That looks like a little fairy tending the leaves. You see him? He's tending that leaf. So I'm just saying those fairy the fairies are among us. You just have to look for them. They want to be known. This looks like a little baby fairy with the bonnet on. Okay, I'm going to put the next one in. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so I'm going to put this one in. I'm going to wet it down some more. And put it in for six minutes. So another two minutes before we open it and see what it does. Just to see if the colors changed. And this is the one where I put, I didn't put any onion skin, so... Onion skins really bring out a lot of color. This one is super hot. So that just was in there for two minutes. Now I'm not kidding. I've seen fairies in other people. In M's place, I saw the green man in one of her prints. So you want to go over there and take a look at what she's doing with this she really has some nice instructional videos on how to do this type of thing um, so let's take a look and see what we have here oh this has some pretty colors now you see these these beautiful I'm pretty sure these are chrysanthemums but they turned lavender these are some old hydrangeas that uh, from another from a bouquet that I had that I soaked in geritol for the iron content. I know, kind of unconventional, but I mean we're kind of experimenting here to see what. And I know you're probably you know you may be using these for your journal pages. I don't do journals per se, but. Um, I do enjoy seeing what people make with their journals. My sister makes some beautiful ones. And uh, some of the leaves just sort of block the color, like that one didn't. And you can see the shape of it a little bit. But, oh, got to be kind of careful. Some of them have dried on the paper. So I can just take this over to the sink and rinse it. But this one is really gorgeous. Oh, the leaves will kind of roll off and then you'll get to see some of those shapes that they've added to. Okay, so these were the uh, kind of a Gerber a daisies that were purple. They turned blue. And then we have the chrysanthemums that were sort of a this beautiful orange color that you can see over here. I use some of those. 
Now this will be a fun one to kind of study for its content. Take a close look and see if we can see any kind of fairies in there. It's really got some beautiful detail. So I'm going to put it down so you can see it. That one's really pretty. Leave a comment if you see anything in this one. Or if you've seen faces in your um, echo printing or in your soap making. Soap making, I've seen faces in my soaps. I've seen faces in my watercolor drawings, my left-handed watercolor drawings. And um, they're always appearing. And I know there's a name for it. It's called para yoy, para something where you see faces in things and some people are really good at seeing the faces so um, I also see spirits of animals like squirrels rabbits kitty cats dogs um, butterflies and quite often the fairies so here's one that's I see a fairy face smiling I don't know if you can see that fairy face right here and it's smiling anyway thanks for watching I see a fairy with his shoulders his face his flower ears and eyes we didn't try to make anything here it just happened Quite intriguing. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit like, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about the fairies' images. Thank you for watching.